Welcome to the 2000 exhibits of the Jefferson County Fair. We're in the 4-H exhibit hall and we're looking at some of the different exhibits tonight. This is Nothing Runs Like a Deer. It's a quilt that somebody's made. Kimberly something or other in fifth grade. Can't read her last name. Here's a farm set that they've made. Uh, somebody else. Uh, let's take a look here. Brandon Ledger made this. He's in fourth grade. He's in 11th graders. 11th grade. He's done a wonderful job. Of course, the Jefferson County Fair is all about farming. So it's good to see somebody doing something that has to do about farms. What we thought we'd do is take a look around at some of the different exhibits. If you can join us. Where we can, we'll give you the names. This is by Ashley Myers, sixth grader. 11 years old. Did pretty well. This is by Amy Rauscher. She just completed fifth grade. Looks like it's bead work. There's a turtle that somebody's made. And Amy Rauscher, fifth grader, just created this lily. Stacy Turner, here at this tree. And Molly Elliott, sixth grader, did this drawing. Diana Garls, created this, she's a fifth grader. Here's a little shoe. Some tennis shoes and happy faces and kind of jewelry around here. This is by Angela Rain. <coughs> this is by Sam Humble, fourth grader. This is Marineland Canada, killer whale tricks. Me and two friends touching and petting a killer whale. I guess this must be Sam. There's a dress. Lots of different clothing that some of the people have made. Some of the kids. A lot of creative talent. There's Gabriel Anderson, fifth grader, created this little doll. Kelsey Johnston created this. Looks like a little bag. And Gabriel Anderson again, fifth grader, created this little handbag. There's one that's called Cowgirl Gear, Boots, Hat, Belt, and Buckle. The rest is just details. I guess she must have created these and put them together in this nice little setting. And here's Jessica Garls. I think I've got her name right. Looks like she's got a, two pillows, one with the letters D-I-D for Dad. And I assume that this one is Mom in the back. That's kind of cute. Here's a sewing kit by Megan Keller. Looks like she's going to be able to sew up a storm. Here's a second premium ribbon for Hedvig Anderson. I think I've got that right. Looks like some kind of a quilt or some kind of a blanket. Here's some more shoes and 
jewelry. Lindsay Oliver is put together. Oh, I know. Lindsay? Good job. There's Lindsay. There's her picture. Give credit where, where credit's due. Hi, Lindsay. Good job. Lots of different activities. There's a mirror. Hope I have this right. Casey Klingen. You can kind of see the camera reflected in the mirror. Looks like she took a mirror and took different stickers and marbles and things and put it against the mirror. There's a little bank somebody created. Can't read their name right here. Kelsey Gerber. Garber, I guess it is, created this horse. This is another horse that they've made. And some antlers that this eighth grader put together. Now let's take a look over here. It's like a water fountain. Let's turn the light up a little bit so you can see it. That one's pretty good. A lot of different flower pots and things. Um, I guess you could plug it in. Very creative. This is part of the outstanding junior exhibits. Here's Casey Klingen, third grader. Put this together. A pillowcase, pillow. I kind of like this one. This is called My Chicken Diagram. It's by Zachary Edlin, fourth grader. This is kind of cute. It's got all the different parts of the chicken labeled. And that's what 4-H is all about, to learn all about chickens and animals and things that are important for 4-H. There's a Beanie Baby stand that this person's created. It's kind of hard sometimes the labels are obscured and they can't tell who it is. There's your healthy dog, a guide to vaccination, an exhibit put together. Here's one on Gettysburg. The victory at all costs. Let's see. By Alex Chambers, I believe. This is a junior exhibit. Got some more exhibits down here. A healthy diet to a healthy life. There's one on zebras. I don't think we have too many zebras in Fairfield. It'd be kind of interesting to know why they picked zebras. And the external structure of a shark. Okay, well, there's not too many sharks in Fairfield area. At least I hope that there aren't too many. And just a lot of different ribbons for different things that the kids have put together. Not much to show on this rack. Uh, let's take a look over this way. Let's bring the light up a little bit. There we go. There's a clown. It's a Carrie Stever. It's like she's an eighth grader. Put that together. There's a musical note candle, a wire basket, there's some beadwork in the shape of a heart, and a painting. This is the issues department. This person's written, vengeance comes from the individual and punishment from God. And that's by April Anderson. 
Um, she's a 10th grader, 16 years old. I believe that she was one of the contestants for the County Fair Queen. There's one. About adoption. This is the child development section. My leaf collection. Somebody's put together. A Sammy McKay. Consumer and management. Expressive arts. Personal development. Citizenship Washington Focus 2000. Yeah, I don't know what that's about. Looks like it got a blue ribbon, maybe a green ribbon. There's something with Hershey's Coca. Got a little character on it. No character on top of this Quaker Oats grits. Reproductive system of the flower. Here's one on baseball called Only the Ball. Only the Ball was White by Jesse Pedrick. It's all about baseball, black baseball stars, civil rights. There's one about the violin, all the different parts of the violin. This is the Saturday afternoon and there's a lot of people coming in, trying to freshen up with some ice cream. Well, let's go around this way. Okay, and the proverbial signs do not touch. This one is by Whitney Hall, place setting. It says lunch, macaroni and cheese, tossed salad, fruit ambrosia, sugar cookie, and lemonade. I received the first premium ribbon. Here's a table set by Catherine Roloff. This is by Sam McKay. It's a patriotic setting. And a cute guy. Little dried grapes. Some kind of a dried fruit in this jar. And a little candle. And American flag. And Chris Myers made this as seventh grader, age 12 at this table setting. Here's one of several chairs that have been made called herbs and it's got several herbs sitting on the seat. This one was made. Don't know how well it'll turn out on camera but it was done with sandblasting. And this was by Adam Bennett age 12. And a couple benches and another chair. So it's take time to smell the flowers. That's pretty cute. And let's see. Agriculture and natural resources. This is by Austin Stacy, 10th, 10 year old. Created okay, this birdhouse. It says, What was your goal? Make a birdhouse kind of like the one I seen at a market. I think they succeeded pretty well. Looks like a toolbox. This is by Kendall Roulet, 10 years old, fourth grader. And 
This is some kind of a scoop made by Kimberly Lacey, 11 years old. And this is another birdhouse by Jake Keller. Birds are going to be doing pretty well this year. There's another birdhouse by Kendall Relay, fourth grader. And a model rocket, a couple model rockets here. Mechanical and engineering section, that's what this is. A wishing well. That one's nice. Ooh, this one's kind of scary. Trick or treat. It's a birdhouse. Ooh, spooky, spooky spiders. Spider on the roof. You see the spider? Here's the spider. Yeah. Ooh, and that's even cute. There's You've even got her back going down the chimney. Ooh. Don't want to go to their house for Halloween. Here's a shelf that somebody's made. And a cabinet, or not a cabinet, a little storage container. And down along this way, we've got a panda bear and different flower exhibits. Pillows. Okay. This one says, leave a note, I'm in the garden. Looks like it's a message board that you could put on the wall or on a refrigerator. Got a little candle here. This is by Chelsea Keller, table setting. Looks like a stained glass type glassware. Uh, was it sun, sun catcher? That's what you call it. This is by Justin Woods, fourth grader. There's another piece of painted object. Small wall hanging. This is the home improvement section. Pillar with a tiger, a lion, tiger. Yes. Got to know my animals. Tree design. This person's made. There's another table setting, little picnic basket. So this one's kind of cute. Let's get a little teddy bear having a tea party. Some more table settings. A lemonade jar, another wall hanging. Table setting. This is by Raylan Hahn. Hope I have the name right. Oh, this one's kind of cute. This is by Heather Wilkinson, seven, seventh grader. Grade completed seven. And it's a fish table covering. No oh, placemat, but it's in the shape of a fish. That one's cute. I'd like to have that one myself. This could be the front of a house. My garden. They've got their name on it. Little brickwork. Some more home improvement objects that people have made. This one's in the shape of horseshoes. Gabriel Anderson created this pillow. Kelsey Johnston, fifth grader, age 11, created this 
heart-shaped pillow. Well, this one's kind of cute. Looks like it's a little birdhouse in the shape of a bee. And a painted horse. There's some craft items. This one's kind of cute too. This is another mailbox in the shape of a pig. There's a mirror, a cracked mirror design. This is by Kelsey Klingen. I hope they have your name right. There I am. In case anybody wants to know how I'm doing this, I'm holding the camera and talking into a wireless microphone. That's how you're able to hear. Here's a snowman. My name's Richard Thompson, by the way. I do the community videotaping for FPAC. So we're here on Saturday afternoon, July 8th, uh, videotaping the fair exhibits that have been created by the 4-H club in Jefferson County. There are several different clubs around. And it's great that the children have something creative to do and something positive to contribute. Here's a little baseball that Whitney Hall, age 13, created. Kind of a nice, happy little face there. And Sherry Steen, I hope I have their name right, created this little dog. This is the visual arts section of the exhibits. Looks like Amber Watson, eighth grader, age 14, created this little covered wagon. She said her goal was I set a goal of making a model out of a covered wagon. And then it says down here, how did you go about working towards your goal? And she writes, I first planned what materials I need and the size. After that, I made, a, made the wheels. I then made the box and finished the axles and wheels by attaching them together into the box. I made the seat and tongue as the last step before making the cover and installing the brace wires. So that's how she made this covered wagon. And that's good because each child who creates something in here, they have two questions that they have to answer. One is, what was your goal? Number two, how did you go about working towards your goal? There's a sheep crossing. Kind of keeps them motivated and able to keep on track with all of their different projects. There's John Nup. His goal was to have the car look like the real car. I love this. How did you go about working towards your goal? I took my time. That's what he wrote sense of humor and being honest. That's okay. Here's Jenny Rousseau in Round Prairie Echoes. 14 years old and eighth grader. Did one. Looks like a chicken display. And I love this on the side. It says eat more pork. Yeah, or turkeys. That's what it is. The turkeys want you to eat more pork. That would be good for Thanksgiving. I don't think the turkeys like Thanksgiving too well. Here's one about the Sears Tower up in Chicago. Some drawings that the children have made. These are 
Again, part of the visual arts section. Race car winner by Sam. There's a little bunny rabbit decoration. Next to that is a snowman. So it's grace, peace, peace, excuse me, faith, honor, hope, love, and joy. That's a nice decoration. And down at the bottom, hanging by threads, says Dad, Mom, Stephen, Stefan, and Angela. And a pillow and a jewelry box. Maria Kill, I think it is. There's some more brickwork with the word Yule on it. So I'm sure that they'll put that out for Christmas. Some picture frames. This one's all decorated up for 4th of July, I think. It's got a lot of glitter on it. This one's got some button work. There's a little flower pot. Little people in it. There's a mailbox. Looks like some kind of a letter holder. Gumball machine. Oops, and it looks like it's been broken, I'm afraid. That's no good. That's why they have signs up. Do not touch. Go kind of bad. Somebody's broken her object. That's a shame. There's a painting. There's a wax candle with some shells around it. There's a stepping stone with a hummingbird that's been painted on. It's pretty cute. And here's another flower dish. Flower pot dish. It's got a bunny rabbit. Yeah. These are the State Fair exhibits that will be going to the Iowa State Fair up in Des Moines. This is by Phoebe Hoskins, chair. Try and get the focus back. Biotechnology, a great promise, a great risk. Somewhere with a chainsaw and some horses that have been decorated. Tractor. Lots of different projects that have been made. And these will be going up to the Iowa State Fair in July or August, I guess, representing Jefferson County and 4 H. Did you notice the signs that they have with the children's name? This one's Michaela Hickenbottom, and it's written in the clover, which is the symbol of the 4-H clubs. There's some clothing that have been made. These are photography exhibits that have been made by different people. This person's been to Epcot Center, probably down in Florida or California. Some outdoor pictures. Somebody's horse. There's one that somebody's drawn of a butterfly, the leaves against the blue sky. This just about brings to a close this 
showing of some of their 4-H exhibits. I want to close up with these signs promoting 4-H. This one says, set your goals high, join 4-H. The time to shine, making new friends, new experiences, showing animals, having fun. 4-H is helping. 4-H worth looking for. We want you to join 4-H. 4-H is fun. Families united, neighborly. That's a cute one. Time to shine. Sunshine. Forage. Just learning about woodworking, visual art, clothing, raising animals, gardening, food and nutrition, and much more. So true. And as this one says, if you're of age, join 4-H. Thank you for joining us for viewing the exhibits of the children who are in 4-H in Jefferson County. the chainsaw exhibits. Looks like we've already had a pretty good time here at the fair making some of these different exhibits. Let's go over and see what they have. Do we show the animals first or do we show the cooking first? 
I think the animals won out. We're in one of the barns. Some of the different animals. Oops, I apologize for the light. And it's tough to get the light just right. Of course, we got to remember that 4-H is all about animals, as well as the rides. It's just the young people that get involved with animal care. Caring for the different species that are active in the county fair. Oh, we can walk down here. I will apologize to the viewers, but we'll not be showing the hog areas. The cameraman doesn't have that strong of a stomach. Never make it as a hog farmer. So we're going to take a pass on that. It's just kind of nice to be able to see the different animals. It's a hot summer afternoon. A lot of them are sitting down resting. Let's get the light up a little bit for you. And every once in a while you'll see them flick their tail just to try and cool themselves off. Take a look at the poultry. And these are some of the poultry exhibits. Poultry area. Some chickens. And they're looking. Yeah, I know. You want to get out. Can't get out. They're looking at us with a great deal of excitement. <laughs> They're letting us know that they're here. This is by Zachary Edlin, and the Genetiers, Ursuline Duckhunkle, Duckle, Duckle, Golden Lace, Copeland. Fatten. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Some chickens by Nick Freeman. Carrie Steen. Carl Steen. Stephanie Smithberg. Smelly. Jenny Pumphrey. Now here's some rabbits that are definitely taking a siesta. You can see how hard they're breathing today. Probably close to 90 degrees. So they're not very active. Just all kind of laying about panting. by Chris Knopp from the Dynamics Club. Mixed breed rabbit. <coughs> if you're not already awake, you could come out here early in the morning and grab a chicken and they let you know how to wake up. And here's a rabbit by Mindy Beard. Baird. By Tasha Stacy. Ah! 
lots of different exhibits. If you haven't already been out to the fair, hope that you enjoy this little taste of it. This is the poultry area. I'm not sure what kind of a segue this is going to be, but this is the cooking contest that is held here at the Jefferson County Fair. And it looks like the judges are getting ready to make a decision before too long. It's almost six o'clock here on Saturday night. I've got several people that have been cooking up a storm. It's Julie Johnston from the Fairfield Ledger taking pictures of some of the cooking contestants. It smells good too. People looking on with eager anticipation for some good food. They've even made their own table decorations. It's like a large tomato slice with cottage cheese on it, some lemonade, some brownies. Cooking up a storm. an entry, I believe, from the Farm Bureau. Yeah. Yum, yum. Bratwurst and chicken slices. In fact, I had a piece of this earlier. It was pretty good. Denny of KMCD. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. Looks like our judges are doing some tasting. And I have this feeling that it might take them three or four times to decide which one's the best. Which, which, which one are you? Me? Yeah. Committee okay. chairman, I guess. You're a committee chairman. What's your name? Rusty Wallace. Rusty. You having fun today? Always. We're videotaping. Hello. How you doing? What? What? Why don't you tell? Let me. Let me come around here. Why don't you tell me what you're cooking? This is Cajun chicken, and uh, we're doing some Cajun chicken. And we're also making some brats and Italian uh, Italian brats. And we're going around giving samples out to try and keep the crowd here for the cookout yeah. contest. Mm, yummy. Would you like that sample? Yeah, I tried one earlier, but it never hurts to try again. Oh, that's right. Yum, yum. I turned the camera on me, but I don't think that would look very good. <laughs> Here's another one. This one's pretty elegant. They've done a table setting with, looks like champagne or some kind of drink and a red rose. Hey, tell me what your name is? Richard Garls. Garls, G-A-R-R-E-L-S. Okay. What, what, what are you cooking? I'm cooking elk steak. Steak? Yes, sir. And looks like stir fry with it? Well, sort of, yes. A lot of homegrown vegetables. And, uh, can, you can, meal. Can, can you show us what you've been cooking? Certainly. Mm. I think we're about ready for the judge. Uh, ju judges haven't been by yet. Not yet. And it looks like they might take take their time. I said earlier, they sometimes take three or four times going around each place right. just to kind of make sure that the quality is good. Well. Well, I hope that you win. Thank you very much. It's, it's enjoyable and a pleasure to be here. We've got this cooker that's smoking. 
smoking up a storm. And we got more people, they're eagerly awaiting. Now let's go over and see what this one is. Hmm. This exhibit looks good. Flies and all. Of course it's a county fair, so we got flies. Dagogi? What what is this? Korean dish called Dagogi. Dagogi. Well it's close. Where what's your name and where are you from? My name's Bud Hearn. I'm from Selma. Selma. What what are the ingredients? Uh just it's round steak, uh, soy sauce, carrots, garlic, green onions, sesame seeds, sesame seed oil, and a little ginger root. Okay. You cooked all your life, or? Pretty much. I, I bet it makes your wife happy. I haven't had one of them for about 14 years. <laughs> ah. You know, even though you don't have a wife, I'm sure somebody appreciates your food. Let, let's take a look at this. Mmm. It looks good. Yeah, the flies are pretty active today, but that's what we expect at a 4-H club. Oh, and this is the cooking contest. And I think it's going to be a while yet before all the judges get around, so we're going to close out with this. Come out and hope that you 
Enjoy the Jefferson County Fair 2000.